How do you wake up? Can you make it more conscious? A ritual is anything done with intention and anything that holds consciousness. So in the morning, it's so important. I light a candle every morning. And then, like I said, I call forward three gratitudes. And then I visualize my day going the way I want it to go without having expectations that it's going to go that way. So I let go of the outcome, but I put the intention into welcoming in flow, welcoming in grace, welcoming in love. And then I ask myself that question, what am I opening to today? Hello, and welcome to the Art of Living Well podcast. I'm Stephanie May Potter, and I'm here with my co-host, Marnie Dotches marmet We created the Art of Living Well podcast to empower you to live your happiest, healthiest, and most authentic life. Each week, we will bring you inspiring and motivating conversations covering health and wellness topics, including fitness, mindset, food, travel, product reviews, and strategies from a variety of experts, including our own bank of knowledge. We are excited to educate, motivate, and inspire you to change the way you perceive health and discover your art of living well. Get ready to feel inspired. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Art of Living Well podcast. We're super excited to introduce today's guest and welcome Mara Branscombe, who is a mother, writer, yogi. She's an artist, a teacher, a mindfulness leader, a ceremonialist, and a spiritual coach. She also has an amazing, calming, and soothing voice, which will come across so beautifully in today's conversation. Mara has recently written the book, Ritual as Remedy, Embodied Practices for Soul Care, which offers so many powerful soul care rituals and ceremonies that will purify and strengthen your mind, your heart, your bodies, and really allow you to activate that inner power. She even guides us through a very brief but wonderful ritual that you can do as part of your morning routine to jumpstart your day. Because let's face it, we're all busy. But I know that we all have five minutes. And if we take that time to prioritize our mind, our body, and our spirit, it will have a ripple effect on your entire day. So a couple of quick highlights from today's show. We're going to dive into soul care and why you should be incorporating this on a daily basis to give you lasting peace and harmony. We'll touch on the new moon and full moon cycles, and Mara dives into specific rituals where you can honor and work with the energy of nature to stay more grounded. Of course, we're going to get into her beautiful book and all the retreats that she runs and more. And one of the highlights I want to mention is this book is... Again, not in addition to being so chock full of all these pearls of wisdom and ideas and suggestions that you can incorporate into your life, it's also the kind of book that you don't have to read cover to cover. You can pick it up and start reading at any point in the book, which I personally enjoy. So with that, let's jump right in to this wonderful conversation with Mara Branscombe. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Shield Your Body. Shield Your Body is a company that makes products to shield your body against electromagnetic frequency, or EMF radiation, from modern technology. Did you know that all modern technology is a source of EMF radiation? Cell phones, laptops, Wi-Fi, even your refrigerator is a source of EMF radiation. And each year, we are exposed to more and more EMFs. There are literally thousands of high quality peer reviewed scientific studies demonstrating clear links between exposure to EMF radiation and a wide range of negative health effects from anxiety and infertility to sleep disruption and cancer. Fortunately, there are easy ways that you can reduce your EMF exposure right now that cost you absolutely nothing. After reading the Shield Your Body Guide, I stopped using my AirPods something I used daily for hours sometimes and have switched back to the old school wired headphones. And for me, after reading the Shield Your Body Guide, I really put my foot down and insisted that my kids keep their cell phones and their laptops out of their bedrooms at night while they were sleeping. And I've been working on Jordan as well. And I think after reading the guide and listening to our podcast, he has finally agreed to do that. 
So download your copy of a free guide at shieldyourbody.com to start improving your health right now. And be sure to check out our episode number 123 with R. Blank, CEO of Shield Your Body. Hi, Mara. Thank you so much for coming on our show today. We were so excited that we were introduced and just can't wait to dive right into this conversation and share not only your first book with everyone, but just your your journey and all that you've learned along the way that sort of culminated in writing Ritual as Remedy. Um, So welcome. Thank you for having me. So Mara, in doing some research for this conversation today, I came across a few interesting and fun facts that really highlight your adventurous spirit. Can you share some of these accomplishments with our listeners before we dive into the conversation? Okay. Uh, (laughs) Maybe you are referring to some of the adventures I've been on in my life. Yes. Um, Yes. Yes. Uh, Yeah, well, I did sail across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, That was an amazing journey that um, really awakened me actually to um, a deeper dive into nature, of course, but I'd say the sacred, the extraordinary, the special, the unique, um, the powerful. And yes, I've, I've, you know, lived in, in India for a year and studying, um, deeply there. And, um, yeah, I think I, I've really been blessed to be able to have these adventures and to say yes to them actually. And they each inform the next step. Yeah. I mean, I just thought that was really cool. And living off a grid in a remote cabin in the woods, you know, that's not something that everyone does. So clearly Mm -hmm. you have this adventurous spirit. And so how did some of these experiences influence the passions that you ultimately pursued, you know, that led you on your journey to become into art and yoga and Mm -hmm. dance and ultimately becoming, you know, a ceremonialist and spirit coach and obviously Mm -hmm. most recently an author. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, th- I, I feel once again, that it all comes down to nature for me. I, I feel so strongly connected to nature and nature, I would say is my guide, my teacher. I work with the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and ether. And I was awakened to the power of ceremony at a very young age. So it was very formative to me when I was 16, I did my first women's um, fire ceremony. And that really, I mean, I grew up in a very conservative middle-class home. I was the fourth child blessed am I that I got to then carve my own way um, and make these choices based on really what inspired me as opposed to what I was meant to do or supposed to do in the traditional view. So all of these pieces um, around nature, around, you know, living with in harmony with the earth, um, studying spiritual lineages, they were really like stepping stones, I would say. And I, I would say my whole life is that, and I see that in my future, the next stepping stone. Okay. Where am I now? The next stepping stone. And it's really exciting. I think to be able to, um, one, be blessed enough to live an existence like this. And two, to say yes to the things that I want to do. It's so funny because we always talk about how life is a journey, not a destination. And I always think about my own journey and how it is exactly what you said, these stepping stones to the next thing. And I, I'm i so curious how you ended up at a women's fire ceremony at mm-hmm. age 16. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, you know, that's yes. not very usual. I know. <laughs> and I was so lucky because I had a best friend whose mom was part of this women's group. And it was never like talked about. I didn't even know she was part of it. And one time I found myself over at her house, you know, and the mom said, do you guys want to come? You know, do you want to, do you want to do this? And we said, yes. I mean, I was really, you know, I was making crystal necklaces and I had my own jewelry. I was already really into earth medicine, I would say, without having a label to it. So Mm -hmm. I was already there. Uh, It wasn't a hard thing for me to, you know, to uh, maneuver into. And, and so that actually changed my life because this women's group was connected to a larger women's group, which is called sisters of the shields. And they taught ceremony and I became an apprentice to them and I would receive packages in the mail because this is pre-internet in the mail describing, I still have these sheets, these notes and, uh, you know, describing how to do a full moon ceremony, describing how to do a new moon ceremony, describing what fall equinox is, winter solstice, spring equinox, summer solstice. So 
that was really um, deeply uh, formative and generative of my path forward. Oh, it's so interesting. Um, I think that a lot of our listeners probably don't even know some of the things you're talking about, but I'm wondering if we should dive into your book because I think it kind of will mm-hmm. naturally go there when we talk yes. about some of these ceremonies. So your book, Ritual is Remedy, um, is really about soul care, right? Mm -hmm. And um, trying to help someone reclaim their true soul purpose through self-care protocols. Can you talk about that a little bit? And um, just how you can generate your own ability to live, you know, your own life. Mm -hmm. So, yes. And I think I'd like to start by what I describe as the difference between self-care and soul care. I mean, we don't need to get tripped up on words at all, but this may be great for for the listeners here is that self-care and, and, you know, is very important. And we, you know, we go get our massages and we get our pedicures and we get our manicures and we take care of ourselves and it feels really good. And we do that. And another part, another aspect of how we can become more embodied, I believe, is soul care. Soul care is when we guide ourselves in a way on a daily basis to show up to meet our true nature or our essential self, our true self. And by that, I mean, do what gives you lasting joy, do what gives you lasting peace and harmony. So an example of that soul care could be, and this is a ritual, is that, you know, you can um, have a moment in nature every day somehow, even if you're living in the city and you just go, get yourself to the park and you sit on the park bench without your phone, you put your phone away, or you turn your phone off and you receive, you look around, you see the colors, you see the birds, you, you see, you know, you tune in to your ecosystem um, you know, and that's a really simple example. I, so I have many examples I could share, but I, I, yeah, I really feel that this is when we step up and say, yes, I'm responsible for me, for my joy and happiness. And how do I feed myself? I'm not talking about food necessarily. Right. So uh-huh. how do I feed what's going on in my mind? What's going on in my heart? What's going on in my emotional body? And, and to work with that as a, a navigation to, to then embody the work of transformation, essentially. Oh, th- this is so beautiful and so powerful. And you're right. There's a lot of talk about self-care, but I truly believe that soul care is what really is important. Yeah, because a lot of times the self-care that we do is what we think we should be doing or what someone else is doing or someone's telling yeah. us what we should do. And really you're like tapping into your own inner strength, your intuition, your essence by, by just simply sitting outside in nature, like you said, which anyone can do. And even just feeding into yourself, like you said, into your, you know, mind, heart, body, like so many of us, don't take that moment to tune in and think about what, you know, what do I want? What do I need? Mm -hmm. What brings me joy? You, yes, I love what both of you are saying. And it's, it could be as simple as lying in bed, you know, before you wake up and saying, what am I grateful for today? Top three, what am I grateful for? And then we go further, or maybe you have a meditation practice first thing in the morning, or you sit quietly with tea or coffee and you don't go to your phone first thing <laughs> and or your devices. And you simply visualize your day going the way you want it to go. Or I love to ask this question in particular of myself every day. What am I opening to today? What am I here to learn today? Somehow, for me, that creates a realm of possibility and a realm of positivity. And I would go deeper and to say that it allows the intuition to come forward and present itself to you, your Mm -hmm. intuitive self to say, I'm opening to this. And that's a stepping stone to lead me to this. I love that. You know, I love that you just said that about intuition because... We've talked about intuition and tapping into that on this show with multiple guests. And I think sometimes that's very vague for people. Those people that are really like externally 
driven and sort of out of body, if you will, and not tuned in. They're like, intuition, how do I do that? Is it my gut, my brain? Like, how do I do that? But what you just said, and like spending time in nature without your phone is probably one of the biggest and simplest ways from what you're saying to do that, that everyone can do. But you need to get out the noise out of your head Mm -hmm. before you can listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. And some, and sometimes that, you know, that takes a repatterning for us because we're not used to being alone and we're not used to being quiet and we're used to being guided and distracted. And so that quiet time, wherever you can find it, you know, so there's a lot of busyness in the world and, you know, those are the, the women who have young children or children. I mean, it's, it's, you know, getting a moment is tough, but we have to do it. We have to wake up just a little early or we have to have those boundaries and go, okay, this is this is, this is my time. And it feels so good, doesn't it, when we show up for ourselves in that way? Absolutely. It does. And then it just like spirals into something better, right? For your whole day. Maybe spiral isn't the right word. Ripples. Yeah. <laughs> um, so can we talk about some small daily rituals and mm-hmm. about your book a little bit? Yes. I would love to. So Ritual as Remedy, Embodied Practice for Soul Care. I just want to give you a little bit of uh, insight where this book came from. Um, So this was an online course that I taught for five years, in fact. And I would say that this this body of work is kind of like all the trainings I've done in my life somehow put into one book. And it came to me in a flash to write the book. I wasn't setting out to write a book, in fact. I was flipping through the PDFs um, for the online course as I was preparing for the next um, cohort to come in. And I looked at the PDFs. I thought, oh, this could be a book. And then I got a visual snapshot, which I would call an intuitive moment. It's just like a snapshot. like, And I saw myself holding a book right against my bookshelf right there. And I thought, oh. Uh Oh, now I have to write the book. So that's how it came forward. And so I just wanted to share that because I think that sometimes things happen, want to come through us. And if we listen, we can, we can hear what wants to come through. Um, And, and then the next message for the book was, this is for the collective. This was pre pandemic, in fact, uh, for the collective. And so um, that meant um, that I needed to get out of my own way and my own ego in order to write the book. So then I sat down to do that. And the book is organized by the elements and by um, the wheel, the Celtic wheel of the year. My ancestry is Irish, English, and Scottish. And that, that's the, what I've been studying since I was 16 years old. So I, um, so it goes through the elements based on um, the seasonal um, alignments. So it starts with the element of air, which is the energy of the heart and the lungs, which is about, um, you know, self-love, compassion, forgiveness. And um, that also sits in the corner of spring equinox. So, you know, once you see the book, you'll see it's all lined out very easily. And it goes through each element, bringing forward, you know, the emotional energy connected, what goes on in the, you know, some of the, um, the mental work, the mind work that we can do to transform and to get into a state of, you know, um, possibility, I would say. And, and then it goes through the practices. So each chapter is, is kind of like, um, a recipe book, like at the end is actually the formulaic, um, rituals. So people can follow along or they can kind of make up their own, you know, they can use it as a guide. And, um, so, you know, what I wanted to also bring forward is that this book is, um, you could pick it up at any place. Like you don't have to start from beginning to end. And some of the rituals that, um, the daily rituals that I bring forward are the gratitude practices that I, you know, and I can share one in a moment. Um, I go through what is the symbolism of new moon and what's a ritual to do at new moon, which is very, very important. That's the inward energy. Very important for listening, for that ability to listen. A full moon is that external, you know, pretty powerful, potent energy. And the full moon always reflects back to us what's out of balance, in fact, in our life so that we can actually tend to that. And and so once we start to get connected to these monthly and daily rhythms, it's it's like you're part of something bigger than just your, your own self. You're part of a universal energy that lives all around us, 
it's something we all have in common, in fact, because we live here. And if we dial into that frequency and start to find rhythm in our daily rituals, it, it literally will shift your life. It will shift your life out of that constant striving or that feeling alone or that feeling that you're never, you know, good enough and all of that stuff, the inner critic, you know, that wants to ruminate all those thoughts. And so, yeah, there, there's, I'd love to share a gratitude ritual. Um, that would be great. If, we would love it. Yeah, we would love that. Okay. Um and so this would be about two minutes and just a little bit of a reset. So I'd invite you, the listeners, if you're sitting at home, you know, if you wanted to close your eyes, you can. If you're driving, of course, please don't do that. Um, and so, yeah, I this is something that I do every morning. And so um, I'm going to close my eyes right now and just kind of tune in. And you can take one hand and place it on, on your heart or your upper chest area. And the other hand, just place at your navel area. So you're, you're making contact with your body. And take a nice full breath, inhale, and a deep sigh, breath out. We'll do two more like that. Nice, big breath in, and breath out. And this time, breath in, and soften all the muscles in your face. Breath out, shoulders soften, and feel yourself connected um, to the earth. Welcome in the element of water for staying fluid and the power of letting go, the power of change. Welcoming in the element of fire for transformation. Welcoming in the element of air for spaciousness, vastness, connectivity to the stars, to the moon, to something greater than the mundane. And welcoming in the element of ether to honor, spirituality, sacred, the extraordinary. And as you're here, welcome in three things that you're grateful for today. And I'm going to ask you to go beyond the mind and bring the gratitudes right down to the lower belly or into the heart, wherever you choose you want them to go. And by that, I mean, visualize what you're grateful for and visualize the essence of that gratitude coming into your body. So it's becoming embodied. And let's go one step further today now. So I want you to visualize how you want the rest of your day to go. Even if there's some tricky transitions or some big things coming up in your day, I want you to just smooth them out by seeing you moving with ease and grace through the rest of your day. Maybe joy, some laughter, some love in there, commitment to do the work that you need to do. You just want to wrap that all in light, like you're wrapping your whole body in light. And one step further even, let's go to an I am statement. So you want to bring something forward that is of positive nature and that's true to you. I am open. I am spacious. I am love. I am vast. I am peaceful whatever that is for you. Breathe that in. And as you're ready, open your eyes. And so this, I would say, is a, a soul care ritual that each of us can do. I, I'd like to do it in the morning, I'd say, because I really feel it can set you up for an experience in your day that you want. And it's amazing how that was what, like two minutes, how I just like, I've had a pretty busy day today since 6 a.m. this morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> nonstop, how taking those two minutes just like totally, I feel more grounded, I feel calmer, more relaxed, mm -hmm. and happy that I was able to take that time to be grateful for a few things. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the affirmation part too, the I am statements. I think that's really powerful. And repeating mm -hmm. those on a daily basis really does rewire those neural pathways. So absolutely. And then when you get tri tripped up in your day and you forget, you can come back to that I am. 
And you go, oh, right, I am. (laughs) I am peaceful, actually. Even though it's really busy, I can still be peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. And Mara, you touched on this already, but I would love to dive into it a little bit because I think your book is unique in this way about how the rituals and habits will revolve around the full moon and the new moon and just the elements that you talked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know you started to share, but maybe we can dive into that a little bit more. Like why are the elements and the moon cycle so important Mm -hmm. and how maybe some examples of some of the rituals that you would do around, you know, you talked about the new moon energy, for instance. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, um, okay. So we're basically all the elements where we inside of us, you know, if you were to break down all of the elements and you break down the human body that exists in, in all of us. So we're already of that nature. And I feel like it brings a lot of accessible, grounded symbolism into us. So like I said, uh, the element of air allows us the power to stay vast and not just small and, you know, and the fire is the sun. It grows our food. It's so powerful. It's so transformative. And water, of course, for the ability to let go. Um, earth for grounding, which is what we all, you know, we can all when we get in our heads and we're really busy, it's harder for us to stay connected to the earth and ground. And when we're not grounded, we're most likely in fear. So I just bring this forward because, you know, and then with the, it's connected to the seven chakras too. So all of the work that's in this book is around energy body work and elemental work. And I fuse it together um, so that we can see what is out of balance in us personally. So there's a lot of personal development in this book. I would say there's as much work on the shadow as there is the light. And I bring it forward so that we can have reflective points of like, where am I living in guilt? Where am I living in shame? You know, why is it so hard for me to let go? What am I holding on to here? that kind of stuff. So that, and then I give a ritual for a remedy in a way for that kind of energy. So the new moon, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of lay that out. Cause I think that might give a little bit more, um, that we're really working on mind body connectivity here. And when we work on mind body connectivity, we, we have a greater chance to evolve. I believe we're not leaving half of us in the other room or in the past or in the future somewhere. We're just all here. And so I'm really glad you brought up the new moon because I think this could be a great place to start full moon as well. There's a lot of great apps out there, but I just look at the farmer's almanac and then I put it in my phone. (laughs) I know when every new moon is, I know when every full moon is and it, they're marking points, in fact. So new moon is every 29 and a half days. Every 29 and a half days, we have an opportunity to drop in and honor the new moon. And that could simply mean knowing that it's on that day and then lighting a candle and sitting with your journal and writing all of your intentions, writing out, it's an, it's, it's, essence is that it's a new beginning. Every new moon is a fresh start. So therefore we go, okay, what am I calling in now? What am I honoring now that's in my life? So again, a lot of personal development, a lot of personal reflection work can happen here. You could do a gratitude practice there. Um, I often have like a, a, ba- a ritual bath where I run an Epsom salt bath. I put rose, es- I put all my flower essence in there. I put my crystals in there. I, you know, and I have, I light a candle and I say, this is my, this is new moon. And I am receiving this inward quiet energy when, or you may be in a meditation, for example, you might want to do a restorative yoga practice. So it's like that. It's more inward. It's, it's quieter. It's slower. And the, you know, of course it's connected to astrology. So if any of, you know, your listeners are into astrology, there's just so much deep symbolism, um, through astrology there to be found and, and great, um, energy to work with. And then, 
for example, I would just like to, to give an example of the full moon and how different that is. So, you know, 12 days after, 12, 14 days after the new moon is the full moon. And so at full moon, you can reflect back to your new moon intentions. You see, you can look, you can, you can go back and say, oh, you know, that was cooking for me there. And those were seeds that I was planting. And full moon is this energy of like, I said, you know, the moon always gives you what you need to see in your life. And she's just like this beautiful mystic in the sky. And, you know, she, she can bring to you. So let's say you're having a hard time at full moon, which a lot of us, you know why? Because it pulls our energy so strong because it pulls the ocean tide. So can you imagine we're like so much water, right? It pulls us, it moves us. We see it in our children, our animals, our partners. We see it, you know, um, the rate of accidents on full moon, it, it, it actually, it's true. And so at full moon, the work is to really, um, you know, write down kind of if there's some harder challenges in your life and there's some, you know, sticky bits in the relationships or, you know, drama and, and kind of get, get, get that out on paper or light a candle. And, you know, we can also think about what we're releasing at full moon. So if it's like, you know, you had an experience close to the full moon where it didn't feel good. You can just, you know, really honor that and be true to yourself and say, I forgive myself. I, you know, I release that holding on, I let go. Um, and so these two guides, guiding points are, are really for women in particular, very powerful because we're, we're very connected to the moon cycle. How would you like to wake up on January 1st and not feel like you needed a complete reset because you overindulged from Halloween through New Year's? And I know how tempting the cookies are. Trust me, I have been there before. But wouldn't you like to be part of a community of like-minded women who during the holiday season, which can be stressful, but also so much fun, you were able to hold true to your health goals and thrive with a community of like-minded people who are going to hold you accountable. So we have this awesome program kicking off on November 16th. It's going to run 30 days. And I don't just want you to take our word for it. I want you to hear what some of our prior participants have had to say. I would recommend the 30-Day Holiday Thrive Program to anyone who wants to help themselves focus on their wellness goals, be it nutrition, meal planning, exercise, meditation, self-care, in a very supportive environment. I very much felt supported by Marnie and Stephanie. It was helpful to hear that they have the same struggles, and even though they may be farther along on the path to wellness, the work of eating right, sleeping, moving is a daily goal for all of us. Well, we're here to help you on your journey to find your art of living well. Click the link in our show notes, message us, head on over to our website. You know where to find us, DM us on Instagram. We can't wait for you to join our community. How, I'm just curious, like, how do you know that, like, like, how does one recognize during the full moon cycle that, something's out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Well, it would probably feel like intense and like, oh, why am I arguing with that person? Why is that bothering me so much? Like what is up, you know, because it's, it's like you, you see it in other people or like if, if someone, if, if you're getting really annoyed, you know, and that kind of, I see it in my, I see it in my kids. I see it in my house for sure. And once you start to see it, guess what? You don't have to be a part of it. That's the cool thing. You don't have to, you don't have to partake in the drama. You can go, you can have compassion for the drama and you can go, ah, I have compassion for this. We're not bypassing. I'm not saying we're bypassing, but I'm just saying, oh, we're being wise about it actually, because whew, let's wait a day. That moon is so big. It's so powerful. And, and then I'm just going to see how I feel tomorrow about this. You know what I mean? So is it just the day of the full moon or it's, is it like it, the days it, leading up to the full moon? Yeah, it's, it builds. It's just, okay. it's just because we call like when we go from new moon to full moon, we call that a waxing moon, right? right. Because it's getting yeah. bigger yeah. and you feel it and you don't always feel it based on your personal astrology. That's why it's great to actually get your chart done and know actually what's going on for you. Um, and 
you know, sometimes it's more strong than others. And um, do you guys have a sense of that? Do you, do you have an experience with that? Well, no. I- I've been hearing for, but I've been hearing for years, people be like, oh, they're all like, either my kids are acting goofy or so when people are acting a little bit off, oh, it's because it's a full moon. So I've heard that for years and years, but I never really focused, you know, and I've done some like yoga classes that are around the full moon or the new moon, but I didn't, I haven't tracked it. Like I actually, Mm -hmm. the only time I ever tracked it is I was doing seed cycling. And so I haven't tracked it for that. Right. But I never thought about like the energy and just like what you said, there are tools and things that you can do or just your mindset, if you're aware of what's going on during those two periods, that you Absolutely. don't have to be a part of it, that you can like manage the situation a little bit better versus yes. being all like, oh, my energy is like way off the charts or just you're, you yes. don't feel like yourself. It's, it seems like people aren't acting or responding in the way they normally would exactly around these two moon cycles. Yes, yes. And, and full moon is definitely more of that new moon is much more subtle and you know and and yeah like there's practices so I teach a lot on full moon and new moon and I love it because you know and I've been doing it through zoom during the pandemic and but it's it's just this real I mean if that is so powerful in the sky can you imagine that energy so why don't we honor it and why don't we tune into it and you know, I have moon gazing practices to do. I have, you know, full moon. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in that chapter on the moon that I think would be really useful for people because also I've had some clients say, oh, I no longer like get really mad when I can't sleep during the full moon anymore because actually I'm more connected. And so I wake up at 4 a.m. and I do uh, a meditation now, or I do a journaling, you know, I, I remember Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer, he used to say that when you, when, when it comes knocking at your door at four in the morning, get up and like move the energy, you know, huh. like just, you know, instead of getting really frustrated and also, you know, as women and hormonal women, and we are moving through all, oh, we are so connected to the moon and then we're moving through the different cycles, you know, monthly. And instead of blaming the full moon for not sleeping, you know, just like work with it, well, like work with her energy, you know? Okay. I love that because, you know, I bet there's a lot of women out there that are, you know, in this 40, 50 year old yes. age that do have sleep, we have sleep issues. And if we were yes. attuned to what was going on with the moon cycle, maybe that's the driving factor as to why. And I like what you said, wake up, embrace it, do something with that energy. Cause you're awake for a reason. And sometimes we blame it on ourselves or yes. different reasons. And it's just part of nature. It's just part of the cycle of life. And this is what we're meant to yes. do maybe at four in the morning. <laughs> and there's more ease, right? There's more ease yeah. when you can just hold that it's just more relaxing actually as well. well. And I, I also love how you said, you know, track the farmer's almanac and put it in your phone. Like for me, mm-hmm. like I've heard of course about moon energy a lot, yeah. yes. but I've never actually like applied it to my own life the way you're suggesting to. Mm-hmm. And I'm for sure going to go put that on my phone now. And I yes. think even just the first step of awareness of when it is a full moon and when it is a new moon and yes. how am I feeling? And like, that mm-hmm. seems pretty like a no brainer to me to just totally. start the process. So and I love like, that idea. Twi- twice a month, right? And that yeah. could be, and what do you have? To, okay. So twice a month. So let's go further. We're going to have a candle. We're going to have a candle ready to light you can have your journal. I always have, you know, I have an altar that, uh, you know, I have flowers, I have stones. I, it's nothing that you have to buy. You don't have to go out and buy things. It's like you gather things from nature and, and it reminds you of staying connected to mm-hmm. a greater force than we know and we can name. And it keeps us humble, I believe. Mm-hmm. I love that. Those are great yes. suggestions. I can't wait to do this. And, you know, I'm even just thinking you got into this at a very young age. Marty and I both have teenage daughters like this. I'm sure they would be kind of really into learning about some of this actually. Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. And my daughters have been doing it with me since, you know, my daughters are eight and 11. um, And they've just been my little, my little team, my little spirit team since birth. (laughs) (laughs) And they're so, you know, I never... I always invite them, but I never, you know, force them, I think. Yeah, and so it right. just make it like special, like with the teenage daughters too, just like, 
you know, buy them a beautiful bouquet or pick them a beautiful bouquet and give them a special candle and a new journal and they'd be like, let's, let's have a little journal session, like about let's, let's write all the things um, in our mind that aren't healthy for us anymore. You know, like I am not, I'm never this, I'm never that, all that stuff for this age, for all of us at any time. And then you go and then you write down what you're grateful for. And then you write down your intentions for what's coming, the next stepping stones. And that's a great way to tap in. I love that idea. Um, that's a wonderful idea. And you mentioned earlier, you know, that you sometimes have rocks and a bouquet and mm -hmm. I, how is working with like minerals or rocks and plants powerful and transformational? Mm -hmm. Well, for one, they bring beauty into your home and your life. And I think that, you know, natural beauty is, holds a frequency that we can align with. And the stones, there is a whole chapter in the earth medicine chapter on crystal healing. And, um, and actually this one, it's even called working with minerals and plants as transmuters of powerful energy. So again, this helps us get into that self-guided soul care, I believe kind of energy. So, um, the first place to start, I would say one stone, which is a very healing stone is a crystal quartz. It holds all the seven chakras. It holds, it holds the energy of aligning you to a frequency that is truly yours. And, um, the way it works is that, you know, the energy that we have in us is also in the crystals, just like we're all the elements. So again, aligning with these natural forces as allies, in fact, not that we have to go like over the top or that, you, you know, you don't need to go spend a ton of money. Again, I love to, you know, source things as naturally and as simply as possible. Um, but they really just, they just, they hold energy. It's you know, in the center of my home on our, on our dining table, I always have an altar um, and it's seasonal and I get my kids to change it. Like they've always been into it. So they go and collect things from nature that, that actually hold each element, earth, air, fire, water. So there's always a candle too on our, our um, dining table. And even if it has to be lit and then blown out, you know, cause it's a quick dinner or dinner on the run, you know, I mean, of course we're busy families, but at some point, you know, having, Having that landing place in your home reminds you of the work. You might have, you know, an oracle deck beside it if you're into that or like a little inspiration jar. There's so many ways that we can anchor into positive, good energy because why not? Why do we, we want that in our home? And so it's about gathering that intention to and making it happen, actually. Well, it's, you're, wor you're working with the natural energy of the earth yes. and mother nature versus against it. That's right. right. And, and then probably it's going to grow and make you even a better recycler and a, a better, you know, a better ancestor because you're already becoming more connected and more compassionate. Yes. Um, and you mentioned something earlier about grounding, I think. And mm -hmm. we, we've, again, we've talked about this on other podcasts episodes, yes. but why is this so powerful? Like what, it, you know, I think sometimes people are like, oh, that means walking outside without my shoes on, you know, in the mm -hmm. grass, for instance. Right. Right. Could mean that for some people. And yeah. also it's like, how do you carry that on a daily basis? So grounding is so important and I'll get even more into it in just a moment, but I wanted to reflect back on it's so important because if we're not grounded, we're probably mostly in our mind and even a busy mind in the future. Like we're always thinking about the future or maybe we're stuck in the past or, you know, but grounding brings us into the present moment so that we can handle what's coming at us, which is often complex and chaotic and so, or dramatic or traumatic. And so how can we be pillars of calm, clear, energy so that we don't take everything personally anymore and we have compassion to go okay i i'm i'm in my own zone over here and i have compassion for what's going on but that's actually not about me so there's so many reasons why to stay grounded and so being grounded could mean getting you know good exercise every day 
you know, with that heart rate, getting that heart rate up a little bit also naturally calms us. Right. When, when you say, and then, uh-huh. you know, maybe those, those quieter moments. So, so if you're not a meditator, don't worry, you can go in nature and you can nature gaze. That's very similar in a way to meditation. You're co-regulating with your environment, in fact. So co-regulation, exercise, um, being positive. So really looking at, you know, the work of your mind, which is some of the biggest work that we all need to do on this planet, is to understand the critical mind and to understand what is what it makes you do <laughs> to <laughs> instead of you know so so really looking at what i call in the book the unconscious rulers of the mind and all of that helps us to ground so if we're keeping up and we're doing that because of new moon and full moon we're keeping up with ours we're staying current in fact with our evolving self when we stay current we can become even more grounded and be there for our kids and be there for our partners and for the community and for all the work that we want to do in the world. I love that. I love how you said the unconscious rulers. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great description. Yes. yes. And it's wild because yeah. if we don't discover why we do that and where it came from, what's the origin of why you do that, then, you know, you're going to continue to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Uh, well, I just want to encourage everyone to go out there and buy your book because I mean, the cover is beautiful, everything about it and it's practical. And you know, I love what you said. You can pick it up in the middle and just go to a chapter yeah. in the middle. You don't have to feel like I have to start from chapter one and read yes. in sequential order. So that's just kind of freeing for people who are busy, yes. who maybe don't have a time to sit down and read it from start to finish. Um, and there's so much more we could dive into, but I also want to mention that you offer these amazing retreats around the world. Um, and you, you, there's a lot of things that you offer, right? You mentioned this program that you, that was a catalyst for mm-hmm. even writing the book to begin with, but can you tell us about some of these experiences that you create mm-hmm. and how your clients are really transformed during, during one mm-hmm. of the, your retreats? Mm-hmm. Great question. And some of the work that I feel is the the deepest work, uh, the work that I love the most And when we get to be together for five to seven days, sometimes it's four days, sometimes it's seven. So I, I, yeah, I just came back from um, a retreat uh, about um, three weeks to a month ago, five days, 22 women, ages 17 to 73. Wow. Unbelievable. It was called Connecting to Source and meditation, yoga, and ritual. And we worked with the Rituals Remedy book, one chapter a day. You know, I just brought forward all the practices. So we did a deep download of the book and a deep download of the yoga practices and um, doing ritual. We did a a fire ceremony and a water ceremony. Um, And so these retreats are, they're guided and there's a lot of free time in between to like recalibrate with nature. All the, what, all the places I choose are nature-based. So it's usually an eco retreat or, you know, very much where we're immersed in nature to begin with. Um, and so what happens is you get to be so taken care of with amazing gourmet food <laughs> and your work is just to show up to the sessions and experience. And I, I was just reflecting on this with my best friend yesterday. I said, if everyone could just do a five day retreat once a year for themselves, the world would be a different place, you know, and it's, it's a, such a deep recalibration that people often tell me on these retreats, Oh, I remember who I am. Oh, I can't believe I went so long in that state. I forgot who I was. And so if we can tap in like this, through the physical practices, we're doing emotional work, we're doing intuitive work, we're doing ancestral healing sometimes. Um, and then we're doing like visioning for the future. Like then what, what is, what is your path of service at this time now? Where do you want to take that? And so it's, it's, we go in, we recalibrate, we vision, and then we come back out into the world, sharing that with the world. Okay. When is your next retreat? That's what I want to know. (laughs) 
<laughs> you have to come. Um, <laughs> yes, it's actually, it was sold out, but I will keep you posted on that. It's um, it's in February and it's at the Haramara Resort. Oh, I've um, been wanting to go there. Yeah, yes. you'll, I do it every year. So you'll have to come okay. the following year. I will let you know for sure. And um, I would love to have you two there. Oh my god! It's gosh. already sold out it's, for February. Yeah. It's well, yeah. Good for you. I I'm mean, turning 50. You. It would have been perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it would have, you know what? We better put you on the wait list. Wait list. Put you on yeah. the wait list. You, can put, both, you yeah. can put both of us on the wait okay. list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have to get your emails in there in that wait list. So send them to me. Yes. So you do it, it once a year. I do it once a year. Mm-hmm. And what was the one you did three weeks ago? Yes. That one is on Cortez Island. So where are you? We were in Vancouver, just like, mm-hmm. um, well, it's actually I had to get a seaplane because it takes 40 minutes to get there. Wow. Um, because it's like really North Island. Um, okay. it's a teeny tiny Island. It's called Hollyhock and it's like the Esalen of Canada. So you guys know about Esalen, I think in the U S that retreat center. So it's just a place I where don't. people, yeah, you should check it out. Maybe, uh, okay. there's a program there for you. Um, but it's really, um, it's a learning center. So it's all, just these programs and there's other facilitators that come that are just incredible. And the food is gourmet and the studios are in the forest. And then oh, like, wow. it's just, yeah, you walk a path in these beautiful studios in the forest. Yeah. And so it's all you ocean. do that in the summer as well. I do. I have my dates already for next summer, July, okay. four, July 14th to 19th, but yeah, I'll, we'll stay in touch because I think, um, yes. yeah, we'll have to, We'll have to meet. I would love that. And I agree when you said if everyone could go on a retreat. And I know this is a luxury, okay? So not yes. everyone can do it. Yes. But you can recreate something on a much smaller scale to disconnect and be in nature. Absolutely. And, and I think- have some of these practices and have someone that can, you know, guide you. Yes. And get you to tap into your inner knowing. And like you said, the ancestral programming. I mean, there's so many things that you mentioned that, you know, Sometimes we do a little bit here and there, but to have it condensed into yeah. one experience over a sev- you know a few day period, you're going to just be so much better off, and the people yes. in your lives are going to benefit and notice it too. So yes, it could. I mean, it could be Ugh. as simple as sleeping in your backyard, right? Yes. Maybe during the moon and light. Well, maybe lighting a candle, maybe not, but doing some yeah. other things, journaling and just getting yes. out there and experiencing For nature. Sure. And, or gathering your friends, gathering your right. women together yes. and going, Hey, you want to go and do this and we're going to bring your journal and, and then and it's, ditch your it, phone, like bring yes, your journal yes, and drop yeah. your phone. That's Absolutely. right. And we're just, because this is ground rules. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We, well, we just funny. had a discussion earlier today on that topic. So yes, it's very relevant. Yeah. Very yeah, relevant. good. So Mara, we love leaving our listeners with some simple, practical tips and strategies. I know you've already shared so many already today, but is there a tip that you can share with someone regardless of kind of where they are on this mm-hmm. path and you know, maybe what is a way that they can develop a new ritual or, or even just ignite their intuition? Yes. I am going to say my number one practice, and I've alluded to this already um, in on the show, but it is, you know, how do you wake up? Can you make it more conscious? A ritual is anything done with intention and anything that holds consciousness. So in the morning is so important I light a candle every morning. And then, like I said, I call forward three gratitudes. And then I visualize my day going the way I want it to go without having expectations that it's going to go that way. So I let go of the outcome, but I put the intention into welcoming in flow, welcoming in grace, welcoming in love. And then I ask myself that question, what am I opening to today? And so that may sound like a lot to someone, you know, just beginning, but you start off small with the gratitudes and then you, you move into mm, the power of visualization is, is is so um, important because it allows us to see what's possible. I feel. So if I just close my eyes for a snapshot and I visualize the rest of my day and how I want it to go, I can get something there. I get, you know, what I get is I get, you know, I can, I can move through it. It makes me stay accountable to my true self as opposed to getting into my drama self or my critical self. And so that is, I'd say is a little tip on if you can see it, you can feel it, you can believe it, you're going to live it. I love that. 
love that. And it's simple. Like we said, it doesn't cost anything and it's going to have like a ripple effect in your entire day. Yes. You said so. if you can see it, you can feel it and you can believe it. You can believe it and then you can live it. Live it. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. The- That's really mm-hmm. powerful. So Mara, where can people find you? Where, where can people buy your book and you know find out more about the, the courses that you offer and um, mm-hmm. retreats, all that? Yes. Well, the book has its own site, ritualasremedy.com. And there's like six different purchase buttons there. (laughs) So Amazon, of course, but you know, it's at all the major, it's anywhere you buy your books. Um, And that goes internationally, UK, US, you know, all over the world. And um, about the events. So the Rituals Remedy page connects to my my main website, which is marabranscombe.com. And um, all the events are there, all the retreats. And actually one thing that's really exciting is I'm having the Rituals Remedy book club starting um, this fall. I saw that. Yes. Yes. So um, I do, I will be doing things like this. I feel like it's important to share the work, to keep, to keep community connected and, it, there's always, there's always a deepening, you know, when we step, when we say yes to do the work, there's always a deepening. That's really Absolutely. cool. So it will be all virtual. I think actually I have it in my notes that it's yeah. October 2nd. Yes. It's it starting, is. which yes. will be a little bit before actually this episode probably drops, yeah. but just for, are you planning to do this in the future? I think probably. that's a great way. Yeah. This is the maiden people. voyage. I'm going to check it out okay. and uh, yeah. see how it goes. You know, it's eight weeks. It's one chapter a week. It's, it's just one hour a week, but it's, it's like movement, breath, journal and then like downloading the energy of the chapter. And then I give people practices to do for the week, like homework, if they want to do it. Yeah. Right. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. So it's like an eight week immersion essentially with minimal time. It's a lot of, uh, you do it, you do the work on your own too, you know? Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, So Mara, as we wrap up this conversation, one question we like to ask all of our guests is what does the art of living well mean to you? Mm. Such a great question. The art of living well means to um, show up for yourself on a daily basis, to honor your true nature, to share it with the world. The art of living well means to me to no longer hold back or get distracted around self-care and soul care, to go for it and to live your best life. It was beautiful. We, we love this question and everyone is so powerful and just really inspirational. So it just and really so sums different. up well this I conversation. Bet. Yes. I bet. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Oh, this you two make such a lovely. great team. Oh. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. It's really cool to meet you two. And it's just you fun to be able to share everything that you're doing with our Thank you. listeners. So, and again, really go out there it. and go out there and buy the book. I think yeah. and it makes a great gift too. It makes right? a great gift. Absolutely. And then ask your local bookstore to carry the book because then yes. more people will see it. In fact. Absolutely. And we will do that. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful have a great day. day. Yeah, you too. Take care. Really nice to, to be with you. Thank you so much for listening to the Art of Living Well podcast. We are so grateful that you joined us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or anyone else you think may benefit from this information. We'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and tag the Art of Living Well podcast on social media. If you want more inspiration in between episodes, you can find us on social media at theartofliving underscore well on Instagram and Facebook where we will share snippets from our daily lives and our journey to living well.